Hello, welcome to Minecraft Let's Play episode 9. I'm very, very, very excited today. We have covered the basics. You know, we've got our storage, we've got our iron farms, we've um, got our buildings, enchantment tables, we've got loads of stuff, okay? Our wheat farms, etc. But it's time. We're ready for the first of our big builds okay we're gonna be moving out of homestead and going all the way over to our iron farm that we did last week and we're gonna be uh, building a skyscraper yeah it's gonna be our permanent home and our skyscraper is gonna be huge it's going to house iron farms it's gonna house gold farms it's gonna house um, our armory all of our storage it, it's going to have pretty much everything we can cram into it. Farms and, and a lot, okay? Um, our iron farm is working marvellously. And uh, I've put these poppies down here just to say a big thank you to all the golems that have given their life um, to make my life easier. And it's, it's quite a lot, <laughs> to be honest with you. Golems, they, they drop one or two maybe poppies every time they die. Uh, and we're just going to keep putting these down as a kind of representation to how many we've uh, we've actually killed off. I've done a whole, whole load of clearing of this land here, and I've put a foundation down just to map out the shape of, of what our skyscraper is actually going to be. And if we go up, you can see the inner circle. The inner circle is going to be the shape and size of our storage system. It's going to be an automated storage system, much, much bigger than the last. We're looking uh, between 60 and 70 different items we can store on this with uh, seven double chests in each item. So it's, it's going to be huge. Um, the outer ring, okay, that's going to be the shape and the outside wall of our skyscraper. Um, we're going to have roads going up to it, obviously, and the two shapes at the front, that's going to be our entrance into it. And then if you go around the back, we're going to have a squared off bit, which is going to be completely separate. And we're going to use that for um, our smelting for all our furnaces and our single automated furnaces, our double automated furnaces. They're all going to be in there in one place. And it's, it's going to be about 10 stories high. You know, we're looking at at least, at least a stack high. And our iron farm is going to go right on, sorry, our gold farm is going to go right on the top of that. Um, it's going to look stupendous. It's going to be amazing. It's all centered off this one block in the middle. So it's, it's going to be great fun, and yeah, it's going to take us a couple of weeks to do this. Um, there's a whole, whole load of materials that we need to do. So I've set up a couple of automated ovens. I've got one that's taking sand for, for glass, because we're going to be doing a lot of glass in this build. And we've got one for cobblestone, which is going to turn to stone, which is going to turn into smooth stone. And we're going to use that for um, our roof and for some of our floors as well. Okay, it's going to be great fun. Um, as usual, I've I've already prepared quite a lot of materials. I spent you know most of the week doing that, um, and the materials we're going to be using in this build, um, a, a blue glass, and probably some grey glass as well. Some smooth stone, made by that oven I just showed you. Some white concrete, grey concrete, black concrete, and some spruce planks okay now the hardest thing of these to get is the black and gray concrete because with these you either have to get the dye from a wither rose and we haven't been there yet or you can get them from ink sacks um from squid now we haven't really touched squid at the minute and we don't have a squid farm so what i've done over by this river here is i've found a patch of river that actually likes to spawn squid and I've just made a little tiny squid farm, just really quickly. It took me about 20 minutes. Um, just a row of glass all the way down on both sides. Um, that'll give us our catchment area for, for our squid to spawn in. Um, a lot quicker than making a, a proper dedicated squid farm. And we've got some magma blocks at the bottom, which make these bubble columns, which actually, if you go into it, if you've ever been into one of these in a cave, it sucks you down to the bottom where the magma blocks is and causes you damage and kills you. So if you combine that with a rail system, collection system like we did on our wheat farm, um, you can get some cool stuff all automated. And we've already got some ink sacks here and you've got some bones as well and plenty of raw fish. 
Um, so that's, that's going to be good. I mean, it's going to, it's, it's not a huge squid farm by any means. It, it's not actually a full size. It's just a temporary one that I've thrown together really quick just to cover us for our build for this, this one build. So we'll be doing a, a proper squid farm later on. It's important to note if you do this though, squid will not spawn if you're too close to this river. Okay, you've got to be 40, 50 blocks away. So what I've done is I've actually put a platform straight up. And when I want to go for a cup of tea, I'll have a bite to eat. I'll just leave my dude here, leave it running, come back half an hour later. And we've got a whole bunch of, you know, raw fish, bones and ink sacs. So that, that works really well, you know, if you AFK it. So, and you get a great view from here. We've got lots of room to do stuff in. I mean, this skyscraper is going to dominate this landscape and we're going to do other large projects in the future as well but this is the first one just to get us going so it's i'm really really excited for it it's going to be really good so if we head back over um we've got to start somewhere you know it's a pretty daunting task if we were going to build this a stack high uh with the radius it's got we're looking at at least you know a thousand stacks of blocks <laughs> in this build it's crazy um and, you know, these bones we can make white dye. With the ink sacks we can make black dye. Uh, as we've discussed in previous episodes with sand and gravel, um, you can make concrete. And depending on what colour dye you've got, you know, you can make different coloured concrete. So we'll, we'll make a whole bunch of, of white concrete there. Uh, one white concrete powder, sorry, and, and a lot of grey. Um, and, and we'll just start. We've just got to start somewhere, you know, and... Like I do with this build, because we're isolated, we don't have any farms around, we don't have any plants that we don't mind trashing, we've got no redstone systems. Um, I'm just going to put the concrete powder down dry. And then once we've built up a bit, we will have a bucket of water and we'll let the water run down and, and do it for us rather than having to you know do it elsewhere and dig it back up again. So if we just start off with the, with the entrance. Um... I don't know. I haven't really decided. Apart from the shape, I have, I have no idea kind of what colours and what design I want out of this yet. Um, I don't know whether to make the entrance out of white concrete, like the rest of the, the build is predominantly going to be, or, or whether to have it completely different, like I'm trying to do now, and um, and have grey with, with like a, a white inlay in the middle. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's Yeah, there's going to be a lot of white in this, but I, I, I think, to be honest with you, I, th I think I really want it the other way around. Um, I want the sticky out bits to be white. So we'll just swap that over. And then I want the inlay bit um, to be grey. Because if we mix it with some spruce then and some a bit of downlighting, I think the grey is going to look pretty good, actually. Uh, in contrast with the white on the outside of it. Um, I think it might just lend the eye, take the eye down to the entrance, which which as a designer, I guess you'd want to do. You know, you don't want people looking elsewhere. You, you, you want people focusing on the entrance, don't you? Um, so I've kind of just made this one block high, and I've gone all the way around. Um, we'll just build this entrance up four blocks in total, so three blocks from here. Um, and, and then we'll kind of work on, I kind of want a flat roof on this entrance just so that we can do some interesting stuff with, with the, uh, the lighting and design, because we do need to incorporate quite a lot of lighting in this. And I think the places we can see the lighting, I'm going to use glowstone. Um, it looks a bit better than a torch and, you know, it, it's got a, a one point more lighting rating it's, it's a 15 point lighting rating on a glowstone so that'll help but if we just put some spruce across the top now you can't put concrete powder up there because it's affected by gravity so what we're gonna have to do is wet some and put it on later on but if we take this spruce all the way over to the edges where the white's gonna go up i think that'll look quite nice as an entrance now I will be cutting a lot of this video and, and doing a lot of work behind the scenes just so you don't have to watch me for two or three hours just building these walls up, okay? But I'll bring you back in on the on the key points. And you can see now that we've got a little bit down, you can see the shape, the outside skin, if you will, that we're going to actually do. And I think it's going to be quite impressive. 
Yeah, it's going to be certainly um, have enough room for a lot of stuff that we're going to put in here. So I'm going to go away now and build this entrance up at least halfway. Okay, and uh, I'll see you once I've got that done. Okay, so I've built this entrance up and um, connected all the bits and pieces, put the down lighting in. The, the size of the entrance, I'm actually stepping in by a block every six blocks just to give it some kind of shape. And, and we're looking at about halfway up at the minute. But I've wet some concrete, polished off the front of that roof, put some down lighting in so it's going to look amazing um, come night time. We've got some grey glass panes on each side and then our entrance to go right through. So this is going to be pretty impressive when you go through there. I've also built the edges up um, four blocks, five blocks, four blocks, five blocks, uh, just with a row of, of grey around there just to kind of, you know, have a little bit of a, a design feature just so it doesn't look too boring. I don't want any glass in this bottom bit of the build because our storage system is going to go on the ground floor and it's going to be seven stacks high. So I don't really want to be seeing that when I'm walking past this place. Um, and and this, this is kind of just what you do. You start from the bottom and you work your way up slowly. Now, we've got concrete powder, which we splash with water and, and to make concrete. And you can see the difference. It's, it's huge. And and you just you just pour the water on, really. <laughs> that's, that's all you do. Um, obviously, the higher you build, the, the higher you're going to have to go up. Uh, and you're going to have to take a, a bucket with you. And, and I would prefer to do it stage by stage rather than doing it all at the end. Just because it's easier to get to. Um, I can't fly. We're not in creative mode. This is 100% survival, including all the the materials gathering and all the building. So, you know, I haven't come across bamboo and I have to use whatever materials I can I can find just to get up and down here. So it's really important not to fall off when you're doing this. Um, this is usually how I die. I fall from a high place. You can see if you put the water down and you're too close, you start floating and it's really hard to control. So yeah, try your best to keep the water a couple of blocks away from you when you're doing this and be mindful of where the water's going to flow. Because if it knocks you off um, from this height, you're a dead man. And this is generally how I go, to be honest. Um, but this is all you do. You, you just pop the water on for a split second, take it back off again. Um, the water will travel all the way down, turning this concrete powder into concrete. It's, it's just far easier from, from doing it beforehand, before the build, uh, when you've got the right conditions to do it in. Ah! <laughs> no! Oh, I survived! <laughs> I told you, this is exactly how I die on on every big build. <laughs> Not paying attention, um, gobbing off too much, uh, and this is why I use sand to get up there because you can knock sand down from the bottom, and uh, you can take it all back down. If you were to use soil or something like that that isn't affected by gravity, it's it's a nightmare to get back. But uh, yeah, <laughs> just be really careful when you do this. Um, but yeah, sand's good for this because uh, you can literally, you know, if you do fall off or you decide to jump into a water that you got down there, uh, you could even land on a bed. You know, if you put a bed down the bottom and your aim's good enough, um, you could jump off the top of this onto a bed and, and you'd survive. So um, it's, it's good now and again just to go around, fill any holes that you've missed, check the design, make sure it's right and, uh, you know, get any concrete blocks that, that are still powder into concrete and uh, just do it a bit at a time really um, so I'll, I'll keep doing this and um, try not to fall off this side <laughs> oh dear I'm so glad I didn't die there uh, it wouldn't have been good twice in two episodes would it that would have been awful but uh, it is it is quite dangerous doing these big builds I, I don't like we like I said we haven't found bamboo yet I haven't come across any, so we can't really make any proper scaffolding. So we've just got to try and do our best. Uh, I don't have any Elytra wings. I, I don't, you know, like creative mode. Um, it, some people make utterly amazing things in creative, uh, and I can't take that away from them at all. But I just I just prefer, you know, working for the materials and, and knowing that, you know, I have to put a good bit of slog into it. You know, it, it gives me more satisfaction at the end of the day. 
I'm not much of a designer, you know, I'm, uh, I am I much prefer to play the game as is. Uh, but if we just go around this outside, it's a bit easier when you're only doing four or five stacks high because you can reach from the ground, so uh, that's a lot easier. And um, if I just, you know, go ahead and do this entire circle and uh, I'll meet you at the other side. Okay, so this is all the way around now and we should have everything all this concrete powder um, apart from a few bits of mist done and it's easy enough just to you know get the bits that you've missed so we're off, we're off to a good start really um, this is, doesn't look too bad and we've got plenty of room for our storage I'm very excited about this storage uh, the, the one that we've got over there it holds 33 different items and I'm struggling I'm struggling with it now. Um, it's great for, you know, basic use. It's great for players that maybe play an hour a day. But, but I put a lot of time into this game and I need something much, much bigger. So this is going to be immense. And the way we've got it angled, we're going to see the sun come up in the morning. So now that we're halfway up, um, I want to actually take some glass and... If you look from the front profile there, we've got, you know, it, it angles outwards, doesn't it? It goes out by a block each time, so the, the, the gap in the middle is getting wider. Um, so I, I want to use blue stained um, glass just to go right up there because the sun rises from the back and it's going to be really nice to see that coming up through the build. And we'll just have <laughs> a couple of more bits we missed there. Um, so yeah, on top of the, the entrance with our roof, I want to put glass from left to right all the way up. So if we just go up the top and replace replace these uh, grey glass, glass uh, panes whilst we're here. There we go. Um, yeah, if we go back up onto the roof, I'll show you exactly what, what I want to do here. And uh, it, it's quite a nice little way just to get some light in the build and, and to see that sun coming up through. I don't just want to have a straight bit of glass all the way through. I want to stagger this. It'll add a bit of texture um, into the build, which which is essential, really, when you've got very, very large columns of, of one particular block. Um, but I'm just going to turn these three blocks on each side into um, concrete. You, you're not going to see these, but I'll know they're there, and it'll, it'll just bug me. Um, so I'll just quickly splash them. And what I'm going to do is to actually leave some water lying down here uh, to get back down again. We're just going to jump from the top because we're going to build off what we're actually building upwards. So if we get a load of blue glass, um, blue glass you can get from certain plants or you can actually use lapis as the blue dye so it's really easy to to come across and i'm going to stagger this one front one back one front one back all the way across and when the the walls get wider i'm just going to continue this glass design all the way up to the to the roof right up to the top uh, a full stack on each so um it's going to look quite good and and rather than just having one straight line right through doing this kind of one miss one one miss one it gives it a bit of texture so when you're looking at it from a distance it's not as smooth and as plain as it would be if it was just one big wall of glass and we're gonna have to go and sleep but yeah putting that water down there really saves you a bit of time <laughs> uh we're just gonna get back up now though plenty of sand so don't worry about that and we'll just build this right up to the top and then we'll go and have a look and, and see what it looks like. But I've done this on a project before and I quite like the look of it. So uh, I'm pretty confident I'm going to like it here too. It just takes takes a bit of time and a whole lot of glass. But if you've got your automated oven set up right and you've got plenty of lapis, then you're laughing. This is quite, quite an easy part of the build really. And there we go. That's, that's halfway up. It's gonna be it's gonna be huge, <laughs> um, and it's it's worth noting that the whole time we're building this, our iron farm's still gonna be working because we're in that you know hundred block radius or whatever it is, um, and we're gonna have oh, so much iron. 
you know. And we're going to be spending most of our time here too, you know, when this is all finished and done. So we're going to have our gold farm, our wheat farm, we're going to have our cows. We're going to have pretty much everything around here all working at one time. And uh, the iron farm is going to actually flow straight into our sorting system with, with no collection required, which is why I placed all those hoppers down last week uh, when we were building it. I did say they were for later on for me. If we just take a leap of faith and hopefully hit the water, <laughs> yeah, we're good. Um, yeah, our iron farms is going to run straight into our sorting system automatically, so there's no need to actually go and collect from it, as will our gold farm. Um, so that's going to be great. If we just go back, have a good look. Ignore the sand, but you can see how that glass gives it a good bit of texture. I'm going to go away now uh, for a few hours and build this right up. And you can see just a couple of hours work and I've managed to invert that shape and go right to the top of the build. Um, I've put a roof on, which we've just made out of slabs so nothing can spawn. I've put some glass on here. Now it's getting so dark in this build that the game thinks it's a cave. <laughs> we've got bats spawning. Um, but yeah, I mean, the front of the, sh the shape of the front, I'm, I'm quite liking that. And the way it's so circular on the sides, um, it, it's not just going to be a big square boring box. It, it's going to be great. Now, I've used black glass on there just to, you know, because it's a bit more opaque so we, we don't see the sorting system. Um, but it's it's going to be great. It's going to be huge. It's, it's going to be um, it's going to work fantastic for all of our needs, and it's going to look quite good too. So, it's uh, it's certainly one of the more interesting builds that you can get. So, we're running short of materials now, and um, this is pretty much everything that I've prepared. So, there's just a, a couple of little things that I want to do. I'm actually using an ender chest now. So if you look at my short on, on how to build ender chests and what they're used for, uh, they're so handy with a big build like this. I've got one ender chest at my storage system uh, at Homestead, and when I fill that, everything appears into this ender chest. That's just one of the two uses that I actually use this for. So it saves having to lump, uh, lump your materials around with you. You can just put them in there. If you've got two chests, it will fill up both chests, no matter how far apart they are. So they're, they're invaluable, really. They're great. Um, we're going to have to put some temporary lighting in, we're going to have to, I'm just going to finish off this black glass here. Like I said, the black glass is just to obscure our vision from the outside of the, the sorting system. Uh, I didn't want to just do the first floor, which is going to be 10 blocks high uh, out of concrete. I thought it was going to look pretty boring. So I thought the black glass will, will do quite nicely. Um, and then I want to put a, a couple of courses on top of this black glass of um, concrete. And that will be our first floor finished. And we can actually get the uh, the storage system started. Because, uh, yeah, I'm running out of... I've run out of um, ink sacks. I've run out of bones. I've run out of dye. Uh, I'm running out of sand. Uh, I'm pretty much running out of everything at the minute. Um, so I want to actually show you guys what we're going to do with the sorting system because we're not just building the skyscraper today we're actually going to start the sorting system too um because this sorting this uh, skyscraper is a bit more than a week's worth of work I'll, I'll be honest with you so we've split it off into two sections but i don't want two episodes just to be about the skyscraper so we're, we're gonna you know split off the sorting system into two sections too and we'll have a bit in each video uh, and then we just need to wet all these and uh, turn them into concrete. And it gives it just, you know, a, a, a bit of uh, design feature. So it's, it's going to be nice. You can see our, our poppy fields out to the side there are getting huge now. Oh, I feel so bad for all these golems that we've actually killed off. But I'm too lazy to go and mine. Okay, so we'll put this concrete round on the top. We've got our glass blocks round. I want to put a floor in. Um, I'm just going to make it out of slabs. This might change. Uh, I might make it out of full blocks yet. Uh, but for now, I, I don't know, because I, I, I can't decide if I want this circle bit, this half moon shape on each side to go right to the top, or if this is going to be the roof. And then the rest of the build is going to be rectangular. Uh, I don't know yet. So I'll put these down now. And, uh, you know, we can always change them later on. Uh, that's the great thing about this. It's no hardship at all. 
Um, just being careful not to fall off. <laughs> That's it. Uh, we're not too bad from this height. We're okay. Laying slabs like this it, it, overhand is is always a lot harder than than full slabs, uh, full blocks, because uh, you've only got half the room for the cursor to go on. So I'll go away uh, and finish off what we're doing here. And now that we're back, um, we'll have a look inside and, and see what I've been up to. I've put some temporary lighting down because we were getting mobs spawning in here. Um, I've put a glass pitched roof with grey, uh, full full blocks of uh, grey glass there. Just to, uh, I've decided that this half moon shape on the side is only going to go up two floors. Uh, the first floor and the second. Now... We've got a load of materials we need to smelt, but I've got one one really big problem is I'm out of fuel. I've, I've got no coal. Um, and what, what I want to do is we've got loads of iron, so um, I'm going to make a lot of buckets. We've got more iron than we know what to do with. Um, and I'm going to use an ender chest. Now, this is the second use that I use these for. Um, an ender chest, if you fill it up and then break it, It'll only take up one slot in your inventory. So, yeah, if you're mining or going to get uh, non-stackable items like this, it's amazing. You can pretty much nearly double your your inventory there. Um, so it's ideal for, for what we're doing. So I'm going to make like 60 or so buckets, which it's not even going to touch our iron supply. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, and I'm going to... I'll put these back and then we'll go down to our mine and we'll go and get, uh, we'll take our ender chest and we'll go and, um, and, and get our lava. Now, we put our ender chest down and then we'll fill all our buckets up. Now, it's very, very, very important. I must stress this out. When you break an ender chest, it has to be with silk touch. If you break it with a normal pick or a normal axe, you will lose the chest and everything in it. Okay has to be a silk touch um so yeah we'll just fill up all these buckets fill up the chest and we're quite far down in our mine so it takes me roughly about two minutes to get here from our skyscraper so this is gonna save us an extra trip you know doubling our, our inventory um yeah fill it up and then all you gotta do is to actually um break it with your silk touch um i'm using a silk touch pick that will take up one slot in our inventory, leaving the rest of our inventory up to uh, to put more in. Yeah, so, I mean, we've got nearly 60 buckets here um, that we can fuel our ovens with, our, our furnaces. And you know, lava is a really good fuel source for ovens. It will smell um, 100 blocks um, each one each lava bucket so it's, it's quite efficient and quite easy to get as well uh, really cheap uh, the the reason why you know i didn't use them from the start is is because they are quite expensive uh for iron to make a bucket or make 60 buckets or 100 buckets or however many you're going to use uh but when you've got an iron farm you know you don't care <laughs> you got more iron than you know what to do with so if we just go back up to uh to our skyscraper back out of our mine and you can see it's quite a big mine this um i've actually hidden the, the the entrance for it in our old storage system there um we'll head back over to our skyscraper and we'll, we'll pop these into our um auto feeders in, in our furnaces and uh yeah these will keep them running for what we're talking a hundred per per bucket and we've got 60 buckets good for six thousand blocks is that right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is going to keep us going for a long time. And you literally just, yeah, empty your load <laughs> into your auto feeder. Uh, and that will just go through nicely and, and just keep our ovens running for a very, very long time. So this is great. Um, when the buckets are dispensed, they'll go into the actual um, the, the bottom uh, chest there. And then we just put our ender chest down and all the lava still in it take it out and put it into your inventory and fill up your feeder you know it's straightforward as that so yeah ender chests uh watch my short if you don't know how to make them but they are worth having um it saves you so much time okay 
that round trip will probably take about 15 minutes usually um so we've saved 15 minutes having to go twice and that's going to go from cobblestone to stone from stone to smooth stone and you can do away without that chest in the middle but i find that you know when one um oven gets clogged up like this with a bucket it's worth having that chest in so the top oven will still work um and and that's yeah we'll just leave these running for for quite a while um i think we'll just we'll actually store our empty buckets um in our chest so you don't lose the buckets when they're used uh, you get them back to go and fill up again so the expensive bits only at the beginning so yeah it's ideal so i'm just going to put this end of chest back and um, we need to go and get some wood and um, i want to start the the chest placement for our auto store auto sorting and store system um i'm really really quite intimidated by <laughs> how many chests this is going to be we're looking for just under a thousand chests just to put the storage chests in and then we're going to need at least at least six or seven hundred um hoppers and the iron's not going to be a problem it, it's it's the amount of wood i'm going to have to actually go and chop because as you know to make a hopper you need a chest uh to make that hopper with so yeah we're looking at 1500 at least um now i'll put some temporary lighting down and we'll put some walls up and you can see on the left and right here we've got a couple of chests put down already so you've got to start somewhere right <laughs> now these uh lights are just temporary they're just to stop things from spawning um this first chest on the left that's going to be our input chest that's where we're going to put everything and then this is going to be our rubbish chest and the rest of the sorted system is going to go around in a big big circle um and you can see you know i've placed them down here uh, so a double chest on the sides just like the original build uh but much bigger and circular now i've never never tried to do a circular storage system before um i'm really not sure how it's going to work i've had to move these forward a couple of blocks because i didn't account properly for the five block deep behind these that we're going to need for our redstone and all of our hoppers um and i, I put a little doorway through here which uh, is going to take us through to the back because we're going to need room to you know to get around the back for maintenance to build this thing we're going to need to get into the back here for our smelters all of our autos um furnaces are going to go back here uh, just keep them out of the way um and yeah we need to build these walls up build the back walls up so i'm gonna i've got a lot of work to do this week and i'm not going to bore you with, with a lot of the details i'm going to go away and actually put all these chests in I won't do any of the um, the redstone or I won't place any of the hoppers until the next video. But yeah, I'm just going to keep working at this, uh, keep building the sides and back up. And I'll put all the chests in ready for next week's uh, next week's episode. Um, we've emptied this a couple of times now. It's still working amazingly. Um, I've had no problems with this iron farm whatsoever. So if you need something that's reliable and easy to build, go back to episode eight where you see the iron farm getting made uh, we've actually got two on this world and if you have a look in our chest here even though i've emptied it a couple of times already it's it's filling up you know I, i've lost count we must have over 100 stacks of uh, of iron so it's absolutely amazing and like i said this is going to feed straight into our storage system and uh, our hoppy fields are getting poppy fields sorry are getting huge Look at this. This just shows you how many um, golems we're actually getting through. Okay. Um, but that's pretty much it for this video. Now, come back next week and hopefully I'll have all the, um, the placement done for our chests. Um, and, and we'll crack on with the redstone component and I'll show you how to put this together. I mean, if you've watched my other video on auto storage, you already know, but... This is slightly different and it's a bit more complicated, so it's worth watching, okay? So come back next week. Uh, give me a like and a subscribe. This has been a whole lot of work this week. I think I've put about oh, 20, 25 hours into this this week between all the uh, the collection of the, the materials and things like that. Uh, I have managed to keep the video down to half an hour. I didn't want to bore you with a full hour long 
um, video but yeah i'm really excited i can't wait to get this storage system up and running can't wait to get this finished it's going to be great fun see you next time